limits at infinity means that either the x is approaching either positive or negative infinity or the function itself is approaching positive or negative infinity. In this case it's the x that's approaching infinity. When that happens and the x is going to either positive or negative infinity there's a couple of ways to approach this. My favorite is you really only need to compare the leading term for each polynomial because if x is going to infinity right here for the numerator to figure out hey what's happening with the numerator well we've got two times x so that's going to be two times infinity which is infinity and then adding nine really doesn't matter because if you already have infinity in fact a double infinity then adding nine really doesn't do anything so you can say this is pretty much going to be the same as the limit as x approaches infinity and then just use the leading term and the leading term so the same type of thing infinity squared that's much more powerful than adding 8 or even adding 5 times infinity so use the most powerful term which is the x squared and then you can do some algebra because you can cancel x's so you've got the limit as x approaches infinity and then 2 divided by x and 2 divided by infinity is 0 you could think about it as well this is two dollars take two dollars and divide it amongst an infinite number of friends how much money does each friend get yeah pretty much nothing so this is going to be zero. I am going to show you another method, but I want to use the calculator to check that I've got this right before I go into that other method. So we've got, here's the graph. In the middle it does some little wavy stuff, but over here as x gets bigger and bigger the function is extremely small so if we trace it and follow it out to the right which is what x goes to infinity means follow it out to the right you'll see that the y value is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and we're not even that close to infinity yet for the x's and so it's gonna just shrink down and down and down until it's practically nothing so zero seems to be the answer. Okay, here's another way, and some people like to do this. What you do is, whatever the highest term is, or the polynomial with the biggest degree out of all of the terms, take that and divide all of the terms by that. So you'd have the limit as x approaches infinity and so we'd have x squared gets divided by x squared, the 5x gets divided by x squared, and 8 gets divided by x squared, and 2x divided by x squared, and 9 divided by x squared. So for me, the disadvantage of doing this is you have to write all of this extra stuff. But you don't have to write the squiggly equals because it's not an approximation. This is exact. So now reduce, we've got limit as x is going to infinity, and it's going to be 2 over x and 9 over x squared, a 1, a 5 over x, and an 8 over x squared. And now we're going to use the same logic as up here, that if you have a constant number divided into an infinite number of pieces, the size of each piece is pretty much nothing. So that means this one becomes 0 and 0 and 0 and 0 and a 1. So we get the answer is 0 plus 0 over 1 plus 0 plus 0, which is a 0 over 1. And that is the same thing.